الحمد لله وكفاه والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we live today in a very strange world and it grows stranger day by day Does the Qur'an offer any help that we might understand the world in which we live today? Listen to the verse from Surah An-Nahl of the Qur'an which we just recited. Surah number 16 entitled The Bee. And we have sent down the book that is the Qur'an we have sent it down on thee, O Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. Sent it down so that this book might explain all things. And in this book there is guidance. And that explanation and that guidance have come as an act of kindness from Allah Most High. And for those who turn to the Qur'an and search in the Qur'an for that which explains, for example, the strange world in which we live today, and search for that guidance in the Qur'an with which to respond to the challenge of this age, for example, and who then follow it. Bushra lahum. Good news and glad tidings for such people. They will understand what others cannot, not even with a PhD from MIT. They will understand what others cannot. And they will succeed when others will not. What then is the explanation of the strange world in which we live today? But before we attempt to provide the explanation as derived from the Qur'an and from he who was sent to teach the Qur'an, let us first recognize what is strange about the world today. At the top of the list I have to put as the strangest thing to have ever occurred in the history of mankind is that Allah Most High had chosen one land and had declared it to be the Holy Land. It's not the Vatican. No. It's not Makkah and Medina. No. It's not Banaras. No. The Holy Land is what is today called Palestine. When he chose that holy land he says in the Quran that it was given to the Jews that's there in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah Nabi Musa alayhi salam the Prophet Moses addresses the Israelite people who today are called Jews this is after they had crossed the Red Sea miraculously and they were now in Sinai. Sinai, the peninsula, 
the, the desert, not the hospital in Manhattan. And in Sinai, he is called up the mountain. And over there, he speaks to Allah. And then he comes down the mountain with the stone tablets, the Ten Commandments underneath his arm. And then he finds his people worshipping an idol made of gold. So many of them are still worshipping that idol made of gold up to today. And then came the punishment which was meted out to them. And then he addressed the Israelite people. And these were his words. يَا قَوْمِ ادْخُلُوا الْأَرْضَ الْمُقَدَّسَةَ الَّتِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَخِرِ الْآيَةِ Oh my people, come on. Let us rise. Let us enter, let us fight and take control of the Holy Land which Allah gave to you. That's there in the Quran. But we don't hear the New York Times. We don't hear CNN talking about it. Why don't they make mention of the fact that the Qur'an has said that the Holy Land was given to the Jews. Why are they so silent? Isn't it suspicious? Perhaps they do not want mankind's attention <laughs> to be directed to this book, the Qur'an. That appears to be the reason. When they entered the Holy Land, eventually the Prophet who was also a king, established a kingdom. The holy state of Israel. That prophet's name was David. Dawood, alayhi salam. And under the rule of his son, Suleiman, the prophet Solomon, alayhi salam, that holy Israel became the ruling state in the world became a state or a kingdom the like of which mankind never saw and will never see again. But then the Israel, Israelite people violated their covenant with Allah and acted in a wicked way. And although the land was given to them, it was given to them conditionally. That is that they must have faith in Allah and be righteous in their conduct. And so when they became wicked in their conduct and they violated the covenant with Allah, He threw them out of the land. The holy state of Israel was destroyed not once but twice. And the second time when they were expelled from the land, Allah put a ban on them that they could never return to reclaim that land and that city of Jerusalem as they own. No, not possible. Allah says in Surah Al-Anbiya, listen to His words. This is perhaps, these are perhaps the two most important verses of the whole Quran for understanding the world order today. He says, بَعْدَ أُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ A town. And Allah has destroyed that town. And the people of the town have been expelled. And having expelled them, Allah has placed a ban on them that they can never return. They can come back as tourists. No problem with that. But they cannot return to reclaim that town, to reclaim that land as their own. Hatta, or until... Until when? Hatta Iza futihat Ya'juj wa ma'juj Wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun Oh, they will be allowed to return at some point in time. When will that be? 
when Gog and Magog are released and they spread out in all directions and with their indestructible power for there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim about Gog and Magog Hadith al-Qudsi the direct speech of Allah I have created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them and so they spread out in all directions and with their indestructible power they take control of the world the land the sea the sky and the world order of Gog and Magog is established then you will see these people returning to that land to that city to reclaim it as their own which city is it which town is it well we know that Allah expelled the Jews from the Holy Land <laughs> oh yes and we know that for 2,000 years they live in exile in the wilderness and we know that the strangest thing of all to have ever occurred in the history of mankind was the return of the Jews to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own and the restoration of a state of Israel in the Holy Land which claims of itself that it is the holy Israel of David alayhi salam and Solomon alayhi salam. The Quran explains the phenomenon of the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. It explains the phenomenon of the restoration of a state of Israel in the Holy Land. When it says that there is a town which Allah destroyed, expel the people, ban their return until Gog and Magog are released. And when they are released, they spread out in all directions. That town is Jerusalem. Oh yes, and so the Quran is explaining to us the world in which we live today. It is a world in which a world order has come into being which controls mankind today. And that world order is the world order of Gog and Magog. Wonderful, isn't it? how the Qur'an can explain what otherwise cannot be understood. Who are Gog and Magog? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam entered into the masjid and found his companions sitting and talking amongst themselves and he asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we are discussing the alamatu sa'a, the signs of the last day. Now when they use the term last day, they're not talking about 24 hours, eh? Oh no. Last day means the last age. Because the Quran says that a day with Allah could be like a thousand years by your counting. So they said, we were discussing the subject of the signs of the last day. And the Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, responded and said the last day would not come. And then he mentioned ten signs. This hadith has been preserved in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari. It has been preserved in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. It is muttafaqun alayhi. What are those ten signs? Number one, Dajjal the false messiah or the antichrist number two Gog and Magog number three Dukhan smoke the environmental pollution which is causing the earth itself to die number four Dabbatul Ard a beast or a creature of the Ard 
Ard can mean earth. Ard can also mean land or territory. But when Ard is used in terms of the last day, it invariably refers to Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land. And so my interpretation, and Allah knows best, is that the beast of the land or the beast of the earth is actually the beast which will emerge in the Holy Land. And everybody could see that beast today. The holy, the unholy state of Israel. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. Number, no, that was number five. Number six, seven, eight. Three chas. Three movements of the earth in which the earth sinks down. So these are massive earthquakes. And when the earth sinks down, it swallows what it swallows. The first one will be in the east. The second one will be in the west. And that is east of Medina and west of Medina. And the third and last one will be in Arabia. And that third one, when it does occur, will confirm this is the Imam, Imam al-Mahdi, who will lead the army, which will liberate the Holy Land. And then there is number 10, and that is that a fire will come out of Yemen and drive mankind to their place of assembly. So it is within the framework of these 10 major signs that we look for an explanation of Gog and Magog. I have a book entitled Jerusalem in the Quran. And that book has a, a chapter. Uh, Jerusalem in the Quran. There's a chapter in this book which deals with Gog and Magog. There's another chapter in this book which deals with Dajjal, the false messiah. And this book basically deals with explaining the subject of the return of the Jews to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. It basically deals with what lies ahead of us in the world. What is the destiny of Jerusalem and the Holy Land? I recommend this book to be read. When Gog and Magog are released into the world, Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran initiates the subject to explain it. Surah Al-Kahf is Surah number 18 of the Quran entitled The Cave. In fact, right here in my native island of Trinidad, I have been working for the last year and a half to write a book on this subject entitled Surah al kaf and the Modern Age. It is Surah al kaf which introduced us to Zulkarnain, someone who possessed faith in Allah, but who had power, a power which could not be resisted by any, any force in the world. He's like a superpower. And Surah al kaf explains to us two journeys which he made, one to the east and one to the west. The one to the west came first and then came the one to the east. And then he made a third journey and it was most probably north. And wherever he went, Zulkarnain had the power to impose his authority. Anyway, and the Quran gave us very interesting information. When power rests on the foundations of faith, as in Zulkarnain, power is used to punish the oppressor. Did you hear that? That when power rests on the foundations of faith, faith in what? Not the American Constitution, faith in Allah. Then power is used to punish the oppressor. 
And then when power was used to punish the oppressor, Surat al Kaf explains that power now goes on to assist those who have faith in Allah and whose conduct is righteous. And this was called uh, this was called the uh, rule of Zulkarnain. Then Zulkarnain traveled to the east and there he met a people who were living in a subsistence economy. They don't know where tomorrow's food is going to come. When a living, people are living in such poverty, living a primitive way of life, when power rests on the foundations of faith, how will you relate to such people? Zulkarnain had the compassion, the good sense, the integrity not to disturb their way of life. And then Zulkarnain traveled in a third direction and came upon a pass between two mountains. And there he came across a people who said to him, O Zulkarnain, Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil ard, Gog and Magog, these two tribes of people, are committing havoc in the land. They are terrorizing the people. They are using power to oppress, to punish. Can you help us? Can you build a barrier to protect us from these people who have the hearts of beasts? We prepare to pay you. Zulkarnayan says, What my Lord has given to me is more valuable. I don't need your money. He says, just help me with manpower. Bring me blocks of iron. He built a barrier. And then he said, now build a fire, blow with your bellows. And then he took molten copper and poured it over that iron wall which he had built. When he built it, then Gog and Magog could no longer penetrate the barrier or scale it. Zulkarnain then said, Haza rahmatu mi Rabbi. This barrier is an act of kindness from my Lord. Faiza jaa wa'du Rabbi. But when that time comes of which my Lord has warned, namely the last stage with the ten signs, ja'alahu dakka'a. Allah is going to bring down the barrier. And when he does that, Gog and Magog are going to be released. That's the origin of the story of Gog and Magog. The Prophet Muhammad Islam informed us that Gog and Magog were actually released into the world in his lifetime. And so we've been living in the world of Gog and Magog since that time. But they grow and they escalate their oppression every age becoming more corrupted than the last one, every age having more oppression than the last one, until we reach the present age. How do they do it? Firstly, their indestructible power. You have to look for a people who will eventually control the world, and who have an indestructible power and who bring the Jews back to the Holy Land and make possible the restoration of a state of Israel in the Holy Land. Who are they? Um, that is the easiest question you will ever be asked. It is the white world order. It is a Europe which used to be Christian and was then mysteriously transformed into an essentially godless people. When Gog and Magog are released, and now we've identified them, European, modern Western civilization, then said the Prophet, والسلام, none of them dies without leaving a thousand more behind. Oh, I would be delighted if I can train one or two or three or four or five young men, train them 
impart to them the knowledge I got from my blessed teacher Maulana Fadur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah and get them to commit themselves to continue the work that I am doing now in a very humble way. I would be happy with five. But he said about Gog and Magog, none of them dies without leaving a thousand more behind. A thousand more to continue the work that they are doing in oppressing mankind, in corrupting everything. This is called globalization. It's bringing the whole world together. But it is corrupting the whole world. When Gog and Magog took control of the world, they then proceeded to bring all of mankind together in one global society. And we are now today sitting at a moment in time when that process is far advanced. Anywhere you go in the world today is the same food. <laughs> McDonald's hamburgers and Kentucky fried chicken. Anywhere you go in the world today you see people in the same blue jeans. Anywhere you go in the world today people have the same sicknesses. Hypertension, Hard problem. Anywhere you go in the world today, people dying for the same reasons, same causes. Oh yes. And so one global society is emerging under the impact of modern European Western civilization that we can identify as the civilization of God and Magog. Is this the only actor at work in the world today? No. The Quran and the Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, directed our attention to another actor as powerful as Gog and Magog. Who is he? He is Dajjal, the false messiah or the antichrist. Why is he known as the false messiah? Simple. Because his mission is to impersonate the true messiah. The true messiah was the son of Mary, Nabi Isa Islam, Jesus. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When Allah sent him, he was sent as the true messiah with a mission to rule the world from Jerusalem, from Holy Israel. But when Allah sent him, and the Jews were waiting for him to come, because they knew when he came, they, the Jews, will rule the world, will rule the world one more time, the golden age will come back. But when Allah sent him, some of them accepted him. But the majority, the rabbis, rejected him. They, the Jews, will rule the world, will rule the world one more time. The golden age will come back. When Allah sent him, some of them accepted him. But the majority, the rabbis, Rejected him. No, 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 no. You cannot be the Messiah. Why not? Number one, they said, he's a bastard. And we seek Allah's protection from such nastiness. He's a bastard. And a bastard cannot be the Messiah. Oh, oh, now I understand. Allah tested them with this virgin girl the holiest, the most virtuous, the most learned, the most pious Jewish girl in all the land. And she has a baby without being married. The child. 
Oh no. They were wrong. You see, they were able to see with only one eye. The other one was blind. When you make judgment with only one eye, the external eye, then you do not always get to the reality of things. But when you see with the second eye, namely the internal eye, the eye of the heart, then you will not be so easily deceived. If Mary had committed adultery, fornication, and she lives in a very religious society, she knows the penalty for committing such a sin. If she became pregnant and she was successful in concealing her pregnancy from the people, no one knew. And if she then left and went out into the wilderness and she had her baby all by herself, all alone. What would she do with that baby if it was a child of sin? I know what she would not do. She wouldn't come back to her people with the baby in her arms. And when she comes back to the people with a baby in her arms, she wouldn't come back in the daytime. She'd come in the nighttime. She wouldn't use the main road. She might use a back street. But she didn't do that. Here was a Mary who returned with the baby. Holding the baby in front of her, not hiding the baby. And when the people accosted her, Mary, whose baby is that? Mary, how could you do such a thing? Your father, your mother were not evil people. She didn't speak. No. She pointed to the baby. The Mary babies don't talk. But then the baby talked. And the baby says, I am the messenger of Allah. I am the messenger of Allah. And so, here was evidence that there was more to this than meets the eye. What any girl would have done if she had committed sin was to go and give away the baby or abandon the baby with some place. But Mary didn't do that. She came back with the baby. And they accused her. They were deceived. No, she was a virgin. And she gave birth to the baby miraculously because Allah wanted to test them. They failed the test. So they said, he can't be the Messiah because he's a bastard. And then later in life when they decided that he must die and they forced the Roman government to crucify him, And then with their own eyes, they saw him die on the cross. With their own eyes. Oh no. He couldn't be the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He never liberated the Holy Land and never restored the state of Israel in the Holy Land as the ruling state in the world. He never ruled the world from Jerusalem. So he could not have been the Messiah. So they're waiting for the Messiah to come. This is what you need to understand. If you wish to understand the strange world in which we live today, not just Gog and Magog. When they rejected him, and they said, no, he couldn't be the Messiah, there he is, he's dead. They're now waiting for the Messiah to come. They know that Allah is not like Washington. When Allah gives His word, He keeps His word. And so they're waiting for the Messiah to come. What they did not know, and no one knew, for 600 years later, was that no, they did not kill Him. No, they did not crucify Him. The Qur'an was sent down to explain that Allah made it appear to them that that was what happened. And then Allah raised him 
So he didn't die. One day he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to rule the world from Jerusalem with a rule which will be eternal. This is the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. But they didn't know that. They say he's dead. So they're waiting for the Messiah to come. You can't live in New York and not do that. I lived in New York for more than 10, years, 10 12 years. Prophet Muhammad والسلام, now explained that Allah was going to release into the world a being created by Allah Himself and who would be commissioned to impersonate the Messiah. And so he's known as Dajjal, the false Messiah or the Antichrist. He's not a human being, no. But he will appear as a human being at the end of his mission. What is his mission? What is it to impersonate the Messiah? Well, since the Messiah must rule the world from Jerusalem, from the Holy Israel, with a rule which would be eternal, it follows that Dajjal, the false Messiah, in order for him to successfully impersonate the true Messiah, must do the same. He must do the same. He must liberate the Holy Land, first of all, from non-Jewish rule. He's done that already. He must bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. That will convince them. He's done that already. He has to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Jews to believe that this is the Holy Israel of David and of Solomon, alayhim salam. It will not be, it will be an impostor. Impostor. He's done that already. Finally, he has to cause that state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world. And that's just around the corner. I assume that Israel's big war of territorial expansion, which will allow Israel to seize all the oil of the Arab Gulf, and which will allow Israel to seize the Suez Canal, and then hold man some, ha, mankind to ransom for oil and force mankind to bow to Israel for oil. Which is why you don't want mankind to develop solar energy. I assume that that big war will take place before Mr. Bush leaves office in his second term. This is my opinion. When Israel wages that big war, then Israel will become the ruling state in the world. The Jal has only one more thing to do after that. He's got to destroy the masjid, Masjid al-Aqsa, and rebuild the temple. He called it the Temple of Solomon. And then he'll proclaim himself and say, I am the Messiah. When he does that and all the Jews accept him that he is the Messiah, then he can rub his hands like this and say, Mission accomplished. Well, it appears as though Dajjal's mission is very close to the end now. After all, the Holy Land has been liberated. The Jews have returned to reclaim it as their own. A state of Israel has been restored in the Holy Land. That Israel has grown from a baby to become a superpower in the world today, second only to the United States. Israel can destroy the whole of Europe with her nuclear weapons and her missiles. 
Israel has become a powerful state because of the support of the United States and of Britain. And so Dajjal is close to the completion of his mission. The Messenger of Allah, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, informed us of the release of Dajjal into the world during his lifetime. During his lifetime. There was an event where he suspected a Jewish boy to have been Dajjal. The boy's name was Ibn Sayyad. And uh, that event in which he met the boy was used to convey to us the information that Dajjal, the real Dajjal has been released into the world. He went on to say that when Dajjal is released into the world, he would live on earth for 40 days. One day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of his days like your days. I got an artist in Malaysia to design this cover of the book. And you see that there are three circles. Over here, a day like a year. Over here, a day like a month. And over here, a day like a week. The analysis conducted in this book is such that it argues that when Dajjal was in a day which is like a year, Britain was his headquarters. And when Dajjal moved to a day which is like a month, the United States of America became his headquarters. And finally, when Dajjal is going to be in a day which is like a week, he comes back home to the Holy Land. He comes back home to the Holy Land. Dajjal has already completed his first phase, a day like a year, when Britain was the ruling state in the world and the sterling pound was the international currency. And then Dajjal moved to a day which is like a month and the United States replaced Britain as the ruling state in the world. And the US dollar became the international currency. And now the United States is about to relinquish power and Israel is about to replace the United States as the ruling state in the world. And what will be the new money? That was sterling pound. This was US dollar. What will this be? Answer. The US dollar is going to be attacked and it will collapse and bring down all the paper money of the world with it. You won't see paper money after that. Well, then what's going to be money? What's the new money that Israel will use to enslave mankind? The way the United States used the U.S. dollar. Answer? Israel is going to use invisible money. You can't see it. Intangible money. You can't touch it. It will be electronic money. And the strange thing, the dangerous thing about electronic money is it is controlled by the banking system around the world and the Jews control the banking system. That's not an uncharitable statement. That's not an invalid statement. That's the truth. That the Jews control the banking system around the world. And if we cannot speak the truth, what else is there to talk about? The new money is going to be invisible money. You can't see it. It's going to be intangible money. You can't touch it. It's no longer possible for you to conceal how much money you have. Your enemy will know exactly how much money you have. Even if you have it hidden underneath a pillow. Your enemy will not only know how much money you have, your enemy, your enemy will know how you are spending your money. 
And the minute the enemy gets the evidence that this is a man who is spending of his wealth in the way of Islam, they'll come after you. <laughs> they'll come after you to brand you a terrorist and to rip you off of whatever wealth you have. And so Dajjal, in a day which is like a, a, a week, now moves from the United States to Israel. And Israel becomes his headquarters. We said that Israel is about to wage a big war. They prepared for this when the Israeli Mossad and the CIA attacked America on September 11 and put the blame on us, us Muslims. They know that's false. They know that they're speaking a monstrous lie. But yet they do it. The Prophet Islam warned us that amongst the times of the last day, he said, would be that people would speak great lies. So beware, he said. Israel wages a big war takes control of the world. When Israel takes control of the world, globalization brings the whole world together and Israel is able to control mankind. And then the Jal is going to be born into the world as a human being and eventually become the ruler of the world from Jerusalem, the way Mr. Bush is ruling the world, from Washington today. And Mr. Churchill used to rule the world from London yesterday. When Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, we said, at that time, Dajjal would have finished his mission and he would now declare, I am the Messiah. What happens after that? We are now understanding the world today. We have understood, we have recognized the dominant actors in the world today, Gog and Magog and Dajjal. But we want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. What's the end going to be like? The Prophet said, Islam, that even if it was the last day, Allah would lengthen that day. So that a man from my family, whose name is my name, whose grandfather's name is my, whose father's name is my father's name. Namely, his name will be Abdullah. Uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. That man will arise and proclaim himself to be Imam al-Mahdi. That's what the Prophet said. When Dajjal announces that he is the Messiah and deceives many of amongst mankind. That would be the time that the Imam will also be born and the Imam will grow up to be a man and he will be a well-known Muslim because the Prophet said a Muslim ruler will die and then there would be arguments and disagreements concerning succession. And at that time a man will come out of Medina and hurry to Makkah. When he reaches to Makkah, the people will come out to him and force him to accept the bayah. The bayah is a political institution which is used to legitimize power and rule over Muslims. When the people take the bayah, he will then proclaim and say, I am the Mahdi. I am the Mahdi. When he makes that proclamation, said the Prophet, والسلام, an army will come to attack him. The army will come from the north, from Syria. The earth will open and swallow that army when the army is between Mecca and Medina between Medina and Mecca. And when the army swallows, that will be sign number eight of the three major earthquakes. In fact, I believe that the recent tsunami in Southeast Asia is the first of the three earthquakes. The second one should happen in the West. And then the third one will happen in Arabia. 
after that, Dajjal will now attack the Imam. He comes, said the Prophet ﷺ, from the east. When the confrontation between Dajjal and the Imam takes place, it will be in Damascus. Then, said the Prophet ﷺ, Nabi Isa ﷺ will come down from the sky with his hands resting on the wings of two angels. I believe that that event is probably about 50 years away from now. Oh yes. Because I believe that Israel is going to wage a big war while Bush is still president. And so a day which is like a week is about to commence. It is when a day which is like a week has ended. Only at that time will Dajjal appear in person as a human being. In a day which is like our day. And at that time will the true Messiah come down. When he comes down, he'll kill that false Messiah. And after that false Messiah is killed, then Allah will destroy Gog and Magog. And now, it's a level battlefield because the cruise missiles ain't going to work anymore. All the electronic gadgetry will not work anymore once the Dajjal is destroyed. And so it's back to conventional warfare. Oh yes, with horses. The Prophet said, when that happens, he said, when you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan, go and join that army. Because no one will be able to stop that army until it reaches Jerusalem. And so a Muslim army a Muslim army is destined to liberate the Holy Land. Liberated of that beast, the state of Israel. When the Holy Land has been liberated, then the Islamic state of Israel will now be established. And the leader would be the true Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. This has been an attempt to use the Quran to explain the world today and to help to anticipate the world tomorrow. At the heart of that explanation is that there are transcendental forces at work in the world today that scientific knowledge has no knowledge about. Dajjal and Gog and Magog. What remains for us to do is to turn to the Quran seriously and turn to the Prophet Muhammad and study what they have to say about the world in which we live today. The Prophet said, didn't he, that one of the strategies that Dajjal will employ to seek to control the whole world would be riba. Riba is not only borrowing and lending money on interest. Riba is also deception through which people are ripped off and your paper money takes the cake. The biggest deception of all is that paper money. The distinguished muftis of Islam still cannot recognize that paper money to be haram. I can only pray that one day they wake up. The paper money is going to go tomorrow when Israel attacks and when, the, when the Israel takes control of all the oil and things. At that time, the U.S. dollar will be attacked and will collapse. The U.S. dollar is already in irreversible decline. And then the new money will come which will be invisible money. And they'll use that invisible money to take control of the world. This is happening now. And yet no one is teaching the subject of riba. And no one understands the subject of riba. Even those who believe they understand it, they don't. And so, we ask of you, do please read this book, Jerusalem in the Quran. It is available, or it soon will be available, in Canada. And, uh, when you get the book, 
do please read it. You will find my email address. My name is Imran Hussein. My email address is I Hussein. I H O S E I N at T S T T dot net dot T T. I hope we'll be able to put it on the screen for you. So you can read it on the screen. Do please, when you read the book, write to me. And I'll be very happy to share with you my thoughts on the subject and to answer any questions that you may have. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawwab rahim برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين يا رب العالمين